Well, I'm actually on, this is, this is actually uh, day eight of this self-portrait. And basically the painting is, is done. I mean, you could call it done now. I, I'd be happy calling it done, but um, it's just so much fun to like kind of build up the paint and to be thinking about old paintings that you've seen in the museum and think about the reason that they made the uh, the brush strokes and built up the paint the way they the way they did. You know, it's and I think some of it is um, this uh, canvas, which is that sixty six by Clayson's. And you can get that on the Jerry's Artorama website. Um, it seems to lend itself to kind of building up the paint. So I really think that's the the only stage left is kind of, it's just, I mean, some of this is a little bit incomplete. So maybe it would be good to just kind of work on this area. It seems a little bit unresolved in some of this uh, lighter areas here, some of these lighter areas. This eye could use another pass. But I think as long as you don't kind of finish one area off too much, um, in other words, that you don't, like, it used to be like the worst thing you could do was be illustrative in your painting, um, like to illustrate, like to say it looks illustrative was, was not a good, not a good quality. Um, but it's really, if, if you're trained as an illustrator at all, I mean, or just trained to render uh, it's hard to get out of that mode. I mean, if you look at uh, great impressionist paintings, it doesn't seem like they're rendering anything. Uh, but they fully understand, you know, from doing things like cast drawing and, uh, well, mainly cast drawing, modeling the form that they, you know, you have that in your mind. So I think, I feel like the strategy right now is building up the paint, but not in any artificial way. I mean, you know, doing it from life, doing it in a way that describes what it, what it is you're, I mean, that reflects what it is you're actually observing in the mirror, in this case. You just don't want it to be fake at all. And I find that I'm back on the hat again here, kind of in the lights. And that color is, it's a little tiny bit overcast today, but uh, a lot of blue, a lot of ultramarine blue. The ivory black works well as the blue. And if that gets too cool, the Indian red here kind of works well. The Indian red always seems to work well in, in dark mixtures. Uh, in terms of warming things up. That seems to be like the right, the right color, basically. So here with the, the paint mixtures, uh, I'm really not using, I'm trying not to use this at the medium uh, very much. I'm trying really to use, to use the paint as much as possible you know, to let the paint do the talking. Certainly when you look at a Van Gogh, it's definitely the, you notice the paint. It's definitely made made out of paint. So when I go up and in through these areas here, I'm really trying to, uh, trying to build up the paint, but definitely looking at the subject looking at the hat so that it's always from life. Well, I think this is going to be a very short session today. Um, it's very dark out and, uh, but there seems to be just enough light to work on the shirt kind of in the face I, from life. I really can't, 
it's very, very dim in here. So, um, very short session today, but I can make out the definition in the, uh, the shirt, really looking at some of these, uh, kind of warm shadows here, the ivory black, a lot of the alizarin, permanent alizarin, which is anthroquinone red. And the Prussian blue always works to really deepen that sort of a color. Gets very, very richly dark. And so that's the way it kind of looks in the mirror is very, very dark shadows in the, what is actually a black shirt. And even, again, it always moves around. Going back to that first video or you know, the, you know, the folds of the, of the clothing, they're always changing every single time. Um, but every now and then they come back to the same position basically, or I might have to kind of move the clothes around a little bit to sort of get the shadows in basically the same place. But it's good, it's been good actually, even if it's just gonna be for another half an hour or something, just to um, to get down here because a lot of time had been spent up here. So I think there'll probably be like, maybe one or two more videos, just kind of, kind of fiddling with some of this, uh, just to go over it again, see what happens. I think, I mean like the ear, the ear seems to only be about halfway there. So it really should have some more some more uh, definition. Should be a little more finished than that. It's a little too sketchy, I think. It's still tough to tell like what, what color are the lights in a black shirt, you know? They, they really, at the moment, I'm feeling like there's more yellow ochre. But that's because the, the overcast kind of does sometimes have a little bit more of a warm quality than it does on a blue sky day. On the blue sky day, it seems like I, I was seeing lots of like really gray blue lights. But the fact that it's uh, sometimes overcast and sometimes really sunny, that's not a bad thing because it does give you that, gives you that option. Just like with landscape painting, you can choose how it's going to be.